I've had this guitar since 1976. At the time I was living in Texas outside of Houston, a town called Tomball, which was just a little town at the time, but I understand now that it's quite a bit bigger. And I had a friend named Rick Metting, and uh, this all went back to a belt buckle I owned. It was a pewter belt buckle. It was about this big, and I wore it everywhere, every day. And uh, Rick really liked that belt buckle for whatever reason. He's always trying to get me to trade something for it. And uh, I always tell him, no, I think I'm just going to keep that belt buckle. I haven't seen one like it before. And uh, so, anyway, the belt buckle was a, a crocodile. And this naked lady, they were on ice skates, and they were skating in kind of a Central Park-like locale. And it was called uh, The Gator and His Dame, I think was the name of it. It was embossed in the back of it. But I was over at Rick's house one day, and we were listening to records. And he made a play for the belt buckle again. And I said, well, why don't you offer me something for it of, uh, you know, of uh, value? And he said, well, what about that guitar over there? against the wall and I said well you can trade me that guitar for this belt buckle and he goes yeah I'll trade you the guitar for the belt buckle I said I'll give you the belt buckle I'll throw in the belt too so anyway like I said I've had this for a number of years it's a little Yamaha FG 110 it's the uh, it's one of the red label um, players uh, I did clean it up a couple of years ago. I've always played this thing, and it's it's been through you name it, uh, 200 degree storage uh, sheds to uh, up in the attic in the basement under the bed. Uh, it's been played a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, one of the things I've always enjoyed about it is it's got such a great sound to it. Hey, yeah, you probably can't hear that, but. Uh, it also never goes out of tune. I don't care, you can put this guitar down for six months, pick it up, and you won't have to touch the, the machine heads. I promise you. I've never seen a guitar that will stay in tune like this one. But I, I really gave it a thorough cleaning, uh, like I say, well, I said a couple years ago, probably about a year ago. And uh, I got up inside the box with a mirror to make sure all the top supports and everything were... Uh, still true and every one of them just like they came off the assembly line but I noticed on one of the supports was a a very faint uh, serial number so through the wonders of the interweb uh, I was able to determine that this guitar born in Japan uh, had a birth date of March 27th yeah March 27th 1972 so at this point it's uh, about 42 years old. I remember Rick telling me at the time too that this belonged to somebody famous down in New Orleans and I thought that was just part of the sale and I'm sure it was but if you look back here uh, someone with uh, a blunt instrument many years ago put their initials and their name back here J.C. Phelps. So Mr. Phelps if you're out there anywhere uh, I've got your 110. <laughs> uh, I'm not much of a guitar player, but um, I don't know, maybe I thought I'd just play a little bit, maybe you could hear a little bit of what it might sound like, you know, as well as this recorder will pick up anyway. So. completely forgot what I was going to do, but uh, I'll probably just stop all on my head. Anyway, um, that's about it. I wish I could play more, but right now, uh, staring into this lens, I can't think of a damn thing to do. So, maybe I'll do another one of these. If you get a chance to buy one of these, they've gotten kind of expensive, but uh, they're very well liked. Some people say it's a true spruce top, others say that it's layered, it's a composite of, you know, several different woods with a, a spruce veneer, but, you know, you can, you can make as much of a percussion instrument out of this as you can a, uh, 
a strained one. Uh, very nice. I know it probably didn't cost an awful lot when uh, it was first offered, but yeah, it just keeps getting better and better every year. Uh, it used to stand up or wrapped in a towel, uh, but now it's it's got a nice padded case, and that's where it, that's where it's going to stay. Anyway, I hope I haven't bored you too much. If you made it this far, you're a real trooper. Have a good day.
Ryan. I wanted to show you that guitar that I've got. Came the other day. It's really pretty. It's a uh, Epiphone SG1966 reissue. Got the set neck. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. You've seen it before. Uh, Grover tuning, Salnico pickups. Also has um, Tunematic Bridge. Blah blah woof woof. Anyway, um, I really like the finish. They call it Heritage Cherry. And uh, it's got a very thick coat of polyurethane on it, which makes it very pretty indeed. So, I, my uh, guitar amp, the transformer, I have an open wounding on it, so I've been able to find a replacement for it. So, I'll, I'll plug into the bass amp. Here's what it sounds like. <laughs> I never said I could play guitar, but uh, anyway, uh, this is it. Came okay, a lot more than I expected, for a lot less than I expected, and uh, I have a hard case for it. It's sitting over there on the bed. Hope you have a good day. I'll, I'll play around for another minute or two, and then see you at the reunion.